and hi everyone. Nice to be here today and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, enlightening you on what to look at and what do the figures mean in your salon. So before I start that, uh, just to tell you a little bit about who I am, uh, I'm Malcolm Gibbons and uh, I've been associated around the hair and beauty industry for the last 30 odd years and I originally worked uh, for a product supply company then decided that I'd get into salon ownership and, and owned uh, some very successful hair and beauty salons for approximately oh, about 16, 17 years. And uh, from there kind of found a liking for helping people and moved into helping other salon owners um, with their salons and achieving what they wanted to achieve, achieve. And did that by focusing on what, what needs to be done in the salons um, to allow them to achieve what they want rather than what does get done. And so I guess that, that brings us to today's topic. This is all about the figures in you. So in my experience, you know, lots of salon owners actually know what they should be watching with their numbers. And um, they also know they should be using them to run their salons better. But then when it comes down to it, they're not really sure exactly what to look at and when they do have a look, they don't necessarily know what those figures mean. So today I'm going to help you with that. Uh, topic and the topic is what figures should I be looking at and how do I analyze them anyway and the answer to that is it really depends it depends on what your focus is what you're wanting to achieve now you guys know as much as I do there's literally hundreds and or almost thousands of figures to evaluate within um, with you know, like in Katumba in your software system there's just thousands of figures that you could evaluate but before checking those figures, it's actually important to establish what you're actually working towards because that determines what figures you want to look at. So for example, are you looking for revenue growth? Um, are you looking to improve your rebookings or retention rate? Um, perhaps you're wanting to grow your sell on social media following. Um, you see, there's lots of areas you could be checking and monitoring. So I guess the simple answer to the question of what figures should I be looking at, the answer is the ones you, that you give the uh, answers to what your focus is at the moment. So what answers your focus? So if your focus is growing revenue, then you should be looking at the revenue figures. If, you're, if your focus is gr growing rebookings, you should be looking at the rebooking figures. Um, so I guess, you know, that... that that bigger question is, what is it that I want to achieve? So if you actually sat down in the first uh, couple of months of this year and figured out what you want for 2018, um, do you know what you want your sell-on to look like at the end of the year? How much revenue? How many staff? What about profit? Um, do you know what you want to make in profit this year? Because there's a big difference, as most of you probably know, between profit and revenue. Revenue is what we put in the till. Profit is what's left after we've paid all the bills. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but there is not really a standard set of figures that you must check every day in the salon um, or every so often. It's more than that. It's, it's actually more personal to your business and you than that. Yes, we can say that there's, there's a, a group of figures that are generalised. What would be the point of reviewing like a set of figures that maybe I give you as a business coach, you should be looking at these figures, um, if they didn't tell you exactly what you needed to know to reach the goals that you have. So point number one is really, uh, if, you, if you're making notes, know what you want to achieve. That's really the first step of looking at figures and uh, evaluating them. Like as I said, if, you, if you're stuck at the moment and you don't know what reports to look at, then figure out what you want to achieve and then look at the reports that provide you with that information. But if you're, if you're totally lost and you haven't got a, a point of, well, I know exactly what I want to achieve, then the one report that you really should be looking at, and I've brought up the Katumba um, report here, the business summary report, you should really be looking at that report at least once a week, at the end of the week, to see where you achieved, what you achieved, and who's achieving. Um, you'll see I've blanked out some names there, um, but that report gives you current data. 
So what are the figures within that report that you should be looking at? Well, first and foremost, probably total dollars. It, it should be your know, total sales. Um, you should really be looking at your retail sales, your average client spend, rebookings, client retention, uh, colour numbers, and if you're a beauty clinic, treatments. You know, if you've got um, treatments separated out, uh, for example, facials and massage and maybe IPL, and or courses that you may be selling. So the, the business summary report really is the go-to report if you're actually just wanting to analyse the overall performance of the business. And the numbers that you check on that report should be the total summary, the, uh, you know, the dollar numbers, the retail and sales, and also the uh, units that you're selling in treatments. But as I was saying before, if you, if you don't really know what you're wanting to achieve, those figures yeah, they just mean, well, that's what we did, and that's really nice. And if you, if you don't have a reason to look at them, then you'll probably end up not looking at them very often. In fact, I'm going to ask a question here, guys, and Donna, you can tell me um, how many people have put their hand up. How many of you look at your reports at least once a week or look at your business summary report at least once a week and understand what you're looking at based on running your business? So how many people have got their hands up there, Donna? Okay, we'll just give them a couple more seconds for it to show. Yep. Okay. It'd be great if there was lots of hands going up. Well, I haven't got lots, I'm sorry. I've got a few. Okay. Oh, here we go, a few more. Um, a few more coming in. We're possibly about half of people who are here. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's actually very good because sometimes, um, Ian, well, a lot of the time when I'm chatting with my clients, um, they go, oh yeah, I, I know the reports are there, but I don't really look at them because I don't know what they mean or, or they've got no relevance. And that's generally not because they're not useful, it's because there's no reason to look at them because I haven't got a goal, so I'm not comparing them to anything. My, my kind of comment is if you had a reason to look at them and knew what they meant compared to where you want to be, then that makes it much more interesting to look at and compare the figures than not looking at them at all. So make sure, and I'm, I'm just going to keep going back to this point for the next probably 15, 20 minutes that we're together, make sure you know what you want to achieve so you've got targets, you've got goals set, and then your reports start to make sense. So speaking of targets, let's look at what targets you could be setting um, yearly, quarterly, and monthly. So a great thing to do at the beginning of each year is to say, well, where do I want to be at the end of this year compared to where I was last year? And look at the areas of your business in the way of uh, financials and also in the um, other side of things, like how many team members do I want more? Do I, do I see myself getting more team members by the end of the year? Do I see myself increasing my um, color business or my, my facial business by the end of the year. Maybe I'm looking at implementing a new product or service and so that's a target, that's a goal um, by the end of the year. And then break, once you've got your yearly kind of plan or your goal, then break it down into quarterly and then monthly. Many, many of the clients that I'm working with are, are setting targets on many areas of their business. Um, for example, some of my, my clients' teams aren't correctly gathering all the data from new clients. You know, the, the new client walks in the door, they're only getting the, basically their name, their email address and their mobile number. That's nowhere near enough information if you want to successfully market your salon. Some of my uh, clients are setting targets for getting the full details of their clients and they're using uh, computer systems to be able to monitor that, to check in and see how many clients are, have got full data and how many are only you know, name, address and uh, email address and phone number. So like I said before, you don't necessarily need to be setting targets just on dollar figures or units. You can set them on totally different areas of the business that you may not even think that is, is uh, causing you a problem. I know a lot of people don't collect all their clients' information and so uh, I start working with them and I say, right, we need to get a, a, some information to your clients, we want to go in and, and, and send a, um, say a survey out to them, have you got their postal addresses? No, I haven't. Why would I want their postal address? Well, why would you only want their email address when we know that only 20 to 30% of them are opening their emails? Wouldn't it be better to get a better response? if you could post something to them. So, you know, there are good reasons 
for getting all the data. Anyway, it's about targets, not about marketing today. So setting a target for completing your client's files um, and details is a great target to have. You know, like I said, you don't need to set targets on figures and numbers. You know, you can set them on anything you want to achieve. Um, another example is client satisfaction. So on a scale of one to 10, overall satisfaction levels maybe in your salon currently sit at seven. Um, and maybe you want them to be at 8.5. So monitoring client satisfaction levels is another important area for targets. How do you know that the clients are satisfied? Well, or you know, what their satisfaction level is, or surveying them. But you can also use your reports. You can go in and see um, whether or not the average client spend is increasing. Because an average client spend that increases over a period of time is showing that clients are satisfied. They're buying more, they're spending more. So, you know, there's, there's those sorts of targets as well. What gets focused on, what gets done. So be aware that if you're not focusing on anything, nothing's really getting done or nothing's getting grown. So if you, if you want to uh, set targets and focus on those few targets, that's important because, as I said, what gets focused on gets done. So if you're not focusing on anything, then your team probably aren't focusing on anything as well. And again, back to the reports, focusing on in your uh, team meetings, how are we going, we're monitoring our progress, you know, where are we up to on our targets this month or this week team, you know, and, and reporting back. That's really important too. I hope you're getting that you you really need to know what you want to achieve um, to be able to set targets in the right areas, to be able to monitor them through selecting the right reports once you know what you want to achieve. I'm kind of reminded of a saying that I heard a long time ago, um, if you don't know where you're going, who knows, you might already be there. So, you know, setting those targets is the key to then using your reports. Actually, another thing to consider, to, to enable you um, from, to start from where you are now, um, to where you want to go is do you take time out of the salon and actually go away and sit down and think about things like I don't know sit at the beach and look at the water and go what is it I want to achieve or do you try and do that you know between clients it's really important to take that time out and go away for even half a day and just focus on targets so I guess really that's point number two is know what you're currently doing right now um, and know where you're starting from. And so, again, that's where your reports come in. So you have to go into uh, business summary reports, brilliant for, for showing you where you are now. I guess, I guess the report that I'm, gonna, I'm talking about is the business summary report a lot because it is such a concise report. It has most of the information that you want in it. You can go in and select dates and times. So you can look at the last seven days or you can look at the last quarter or you can actually type in dates. When you're setting targets and you're looking at um, where you're currently at if you're looking at averages, I suggest three months, go back three months, and that will give you a good current average result for the, the different areas that you're looking at. Unless Christmas is involved in that three month period, then I suggest go back six months, because we all know that our Christmas weeks are, are generally a lot better than our average weeks. So for targets that are involving total dollars or numbers of colours and facials, you really want to go, you know, uh, colours or facials, you want to go back to three months and if it's got Christmas, six months. For my clients as a group, we actually do a whole day planning session in October, planning for the following year. And then we do quarterly half day sessions throughout the year to, to monitor the progress, reevaluate the relevance of, of where we're at and discuss new strategies and tactics and pro, uh, and looking at the next 90 days or the next quarter, what we need to do to actually achieve those goals. And that's what I suggest you guys do as well. Once you've set your targets, every every well, you should be monitoring every week your results. But at least every three months, sit down and look at where you where you were, where you've been in the last three months, and how are you going in relation to the goals that you've set for the for the year, and what do you need to do in the next three months to either catch up or maybe you've achieved some of the goals that you set for that quarter. So setting new goals for the next quarter for your overall yearly plan. Actually, if you're interested in attending any of those events, um, I do them in Auckland, Wellington, and we're just about to start in Christchurch here in New Zealand. So um, it would be, be okay if you, they pop their email address in uh, in the question box for you, Donna, to just flick to me, and I can <laughs> let them know. 
you know, that's all right. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. I'll um, pass it on if they want to pop your email. Yeah, in. cool. If anyone's interested in some info, yeah. fantastic. Um, anyway. We, we also, we look at the summary reports and we track that growth, if there's growth. We, you know, one of the things I had a conversation with someone the other day was about their accountant and they were, they were complaining, as most, well, I shouldn't say most people, as many people do, that when they go to their accountant, their accountant says, oh, you haven't had a very good year. Um, you could have done such and such or you should have done so and so. But there's no point in doing that at the end of the year when throughout the year you could have changed what was happening if you'd have spent some time looking at and evaluating where you were at against where you want to be. So that three month check-in is really good um, whether you do it in a group like, like with what I do or whether you do it on your own, go down to that spot on the beach that you like and just look at your figures look at where you're at, look at where you want to be and say what do I need to do next to, ch to achieve that. And let's not forget about the target feature in Katumba. You know, that's a brilliant tool um, that many salons are using to set, track and monitor the targets you know, for individuals and also for the total salon result. So if you're not using the targets feature in the Katumba system, I suggest that you start using it it's brilliant. The team love, teams that are using it love it because they can track their own progress uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And of course the salon owner loves it because they can monitor the total salon's totals and they can actually see individually how people are tracking and they then have information that can help them help their team to achieve the, uh, the targets that have been set. So just out of a show of hands on, on the screen, how many people are using the salon target system in Katoomba? Put your hands up if you're using it, and Donna can tell us that you've all put your hands up. Got some numbers there, Donna? I've, yeah, I'm just... Many? Seems to be a bit of a delay for them to show up today, but um, yeah, I've got a few. Okay. Um, a few? Not, yeah, a few. I'd like to have seen more, but um, yeah. a few's good. Well, the, I, I guess there's... Uh, from my perspective, there's probably no point using the target system if you haven't got target set if you're not setting targets. So it goes back to point number one, which is, you know, set targets. Know what you want to achieve. Um, and and so once you know what you want to achieve, you can then put it in there and say, well, this is what we're aiming at. And when you know what you're aiming at, you can then start working on strategies and plans to actually help you get from where you are today, which was point number two, um, to get where you want to be. So remember that we do need to establish that, that where we are right now is really important. So this is still on point number two. Calculate your averages based on the last three months or if Christmas is involved, maybe the last six months to give you an average result of what's happening in the salon on a weekly basis. Because you know you can have a you can have in a month you can have say three really good weeks and one really bad week and then you could if you did your figures based on that really bad week um, you're not going to be setting very accurate targets so it's better to have an average over the whole month which would give you a better result than um, you know choosing targets based on a bad week or even on a good week which would make the targets potentially hard to get and the other thing to remember guys is it's really important not to set too many targets at once because we can't focus on lots of things. So you know you can have goals for uh, lots of targets but you don't necessarily need to or should be working on those targets all at once. So choose the targets that you want to achieve and then divide them into sections where you say, well, these are the priorities first, these are the second priorities, and these are the third priorities. And over a period of 12 months, we will work towards all of those targets, but not necessarily all at the same time. I, we've established what we need to, to know, you know, that where we're going, and what we need to, to know about where we are right now. And the next step, really, in uh, point number three, is to look at the gap, measure the gap between where we are and where we want to go um, at doing a, a, a total dollar target. And our, re our weekly result is, is say it's four thousand four thousand eight hundred dollars and let's say we set the target at six thousand dollars. What I mean by measuring the gap is, the question really is, does, does that mean we're looking for six thousand dollars? 
The answer to that is not really, and it's a mistake that a lot of a lot of people make when when you know with my clients we start working on targets and they say, oh God, I don't know whether we can do six thousand dollars, and that seems to make them feel a little bit defeated or deflated before they start because they think that they're they're looking for six thousand dollars when in fact that's nowhere near what they need to do. And, and what they need to do is, is way easier because when you look at that in this scenario of measuring the gap is that they're already doing an average of $4,800 a week and what they want to do is 6000 so all they have to do is an extra $1,200 so really the target isn't necessarily $6,000, it's an extra $1,200. And that makes a lot more sense and, and sounds way more achievable uh, than $6,000. So point number three is the real target is the difference, not the total. So look at the gap. I love this stuff. It's, it's actually really exciting when you start to see how easy it is to actually grow your business based on the gap as opposed to the total results that you're looking for. And it's way more fun when you can say to, to a team member that uh, what their growth or what the growth you're looking for them is based on the gap as opposed to the total figures at the end. Because the reality is that if you already have $4,800 coming into the till this week, um, you're not looking for $4,800 or $6,000, you're looking for the difference of $1,200. Um, and it's a lot more conceivable for, say, a team member to see how um, they could do an extra $450 a week rather than, say, a total target of $3,200 because they've already got $2,800 booked in. Um, and that's where, again, the reports within Katumba, you can look at the um, projected weekly income. I guess the next and final point uh, for today is, is point number four, and that's establish the strategies and the tactics that you're actually going to do and to employ to facilitate the growth or to, to get the result that you want to achieve with the targets that you're, you're going to set or that you have already set. For example, in our case uh, of, the, of the total dollar target, we're, we're doing 4,800, we want 6,000, so the gap's 1,200. So what does $1,200 look like in sell-on services? Now I'm just going to stick some numbers in here but you'll work it out based on your own prices. But let's just say in a hair salon or, or even a beauty clinic, but a hair salon is, a, say, a colour cut and blow away is $150. And we then did one more every second day of the week. So that's three extra colour cuts and blow waves. So that's $450. So we now have $750 to find. Now let's say that a treatment in your salon, a, a hair treatment, is $40. Now, just as an aside, you really should know that 85% of your clients walking through the door have got dry hair. So we could all do way more treatments in the salons than, than the salons are doing at the moment. I'm sure you'll all agree that treatments could be a better uh, number for you guys as well. Uh, what would we say? $40. And let's say that you did an extra 15 treatments a week. One a day for each staff member or two a day for each staff member. Not a lot. Um, easy to do. But let's just say it's 15, so that's another $400, uh, $600, sorry. <laughs> that's a lot of money. That's $27,000 a year. Wow. Could you do an extra $20,000, $27,000 a year, guys? Anyway, that's beside the point. Let's look, at, let's look at doing three treatments rather than 15. Three treatments a week. No, that's not enough. No, nah, nowhere near enough. Eight. You pick your numbers. We're looking for seven hundred and fifty dollars. So let's say it's forty dollars, eight treatments, four hundred dollars. Okay, so eight treatments, four hundred dollars. And then let's say eight people bought a product at thirty bucks each, two hundred and forty dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars. So you're probably going to hit your target. So I guess what I'm saying in a in a rambling roundabout sort of a way is what does twelve hundred dollars, if that's the difference, if that's the gap, what does it look like in your salon? How many services does it will it make do, do you make up to twelve hundred dollars in your salon? And so that then becomes the target. We're looking for three colours, eight treatments, and say eight product sales. So we're, put, we're talking about point number four, establishing your strategies and tactics to help you achieve the goal. The strategies and tactics are then 
well, how are we going to sell three extra colours? How are we going to sell eight extra treatments? And how are we going to sell eight retail products? And that is a lot more manageable than trying to find $6,000 of sales. Other than that, I talked about Quarter Club, so if anyone's interested, just leave your email address there. Donna will let me know. And um, any questions, I guess. If there's anyone got any questions there, I'm happy to answer them. If you've got questions now, now's the time to put them in there. We have got a few minutes um, to answer those questions for you. So if you just pop those in, um, I can let Malcolm know what those are. And of course, if you are interested, pop your, name, your email address into the question pane as well, and I can um, forward this out those on to Malcolm. Just one of the things, Malcolm, you mentioned the targets um, in Katumba and yes. for those customers who haven't caught up with that, we've actually done some modification to that. So you can now actually set those targets monthly and weekly. And you can also change what day you start from um, as well. So if you don't open till Tuesday or something, then you can actually change that to, your targets to start from that day. So that was a release that was done last week. Um, so if you haven't caught up, cool. have a look. Yeah, it's really great. We're really excited about it. It gives people the flexibility to make it work for them, um, which is really cool. Great stuff. Okay, let's just have a look and see if I've got any questions. I've certainly got some email addresses popping up, so that's great. Okay, cool. Okay. I'll one of the questions, one of the questions I had earlier on um, was that they look at the reports, but they don't really know what they're looking at. Um, mm -hmm. So is there anything that you could perhaps help with that? I know you had a picture of the business summary. What's the key things people should be looking at? Well, I think, like I, I probably alluded to, that if you don't really know what you're aiming at, then the, there is a, a basic set of things, and it's probably total um, sales. Um, it's retail sales, um, and then average client spend, client retention. Um, we're finding, I'm finding client retention is more important these days than client rebookings, although client rebookings is still you know, one of the most important KPIs in a salon. Um, the, the, the reason why retention is starting to, to be probably way more import, important than it ever was is because with the advent of online bookings, um, rebookings is becoming slightly less important to, to some people making the next appointment because they can go online and book um, and so to measure, measure results for the salon now we're starting to look more at client retention than rebookings although um, I still with my clients have a target of 85% rebooking um, and, and many of them are achieving that so um, not diminishing the importance of rebookings but retention is becoming more important so that's that's another figure to look at and you know for the for the basics of, of services you're probably looking at treatment sales colour sales um, and foils, if you break colour into two sections, foils and, and uh, global colour. Mm -hmm. And in, in beauty clinics, you would be looking at the same numbers in dollars, so and, and client retention and rebookings, but you'd be looking at your major services like um, facials, massage, IPL type treatments. Um, and just tracking those, seeing where you're at and, and um, understanding against client numbers, that's probably important too, is to actually go, well, you know, we're doing five uh, colour services against 50 clients. Well, you know, is that good enough? Yeah. Do I want to do more? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is probably no and yes. <laughs> that wouldn't be good enough. And yes, you would want to do more. Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope I hope that I've made sense uh, with what we were talking about today. And I hope I've helped you with understanding um, that the first step is to uh, know where you want to go, so establish some targets, and you need to do that based on step number two, which is uh, know where you are now, and then uh, basically get into uh, the gap, experience, find out what the gap is, not what you need to do, and then what, what are you going to do to be able to achieve the gap.